Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to uh, lecture 4 uh, in this series on uh, uh, Riemann surfaces and algebraic curves. So, uh, what we will try to do in this lecture is to try to put uh, Riemann surface structures on the cylinder in the torus. So, let us begin with the cylinder. So, let me write that down Riemann surface structures on a cylinder. So, you see. Uh, we visualize uh, the cylinder uh, in three space as follows. So, uh, these are the axes and uh, we have here the, the unit circle uh, which is uh, usually denoted by S1 the one sphere and uh, then we have uh, the cylinder uh, with this as base and uh, with axis parallel to the z axis. So, this is your cylinder here and let me call it as uh, script C. You can see that this is just uh, S 1 cross R where uh, this S 1 is uh, the unit circle and uh, R is of course, uh, uh, R refers to the, the z axis. So, here is my cylinder and uh, basically um, I want to turn this into a Riemann surface ok. So, what is our aim? Our aim is given any point on the cylinder I will have to produce a small disc like neighborhood and a coordinate chart on that neighborhood which identifies it with a piece of, uh, 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 of the complex plane in fact with a small disc like uh, a disc on the complex plane. And then I will have to give you a collection of such charts which uh, gives you an atlas. And of course, then the Riemann su surface structure that I am going to talk about uh, is going to be uh, the uh, Riemann surface specified by the maximal atlas which contains that atlas ok. So, well so somehow I will have to connect this to the plane and in this case uh, it is very uh, easy to do that in a uh, in an intuitive way. So, what I do is that well uh, I let us let us draw a dotted line on the on the cylinder uh, parallel to the z axis and assume that uh, let me just cut it up cut along the dot dotted line and when I do that what I will get is basically I will get a I will get a strip like this I will get a strip uh, of course, uh, it is going to look like a vertical strip. Uh, which is going to be uh, uh, which is going to go to infinity in both directions uh, vertically and uh, of course, this length is going to be the uh, equal to the length of the uh, unit circle and well um, how do I undo this operation I undo this operation well uh, by actually identifying the, the uh, edges. So, this this strip has two edges and I uh, put arrows to tell you that you have to identify this edge with that edge namely just you stick this edge to that edge and you will get back your cylinder right. Well, so, so here is my uh, here is my this my here is my strip uh, it is still not yet not quite the plane, but you can make this into the plane in the following way what you do is well at least uh, for the purposes of uh, the present lecture at least for the moment let me erase this 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 dividing line because I may need the whole of this blackboard. Um, so, you see what you do is you just well uh, take this strip 
and uh, repeat it infinitely that is put several co infinitely many copies of this strip uh, on both sides and if you continue it you get the plane okay. So I will I'll do it like this so what I do is well uh, there is no particular way to do it uh, in the sense that uh, I can think of the strip to be like this. So here is my strip and let me call this as a copy 1 of the strip okay. I put uh, another copy of it on this side here is copy 2 and then I put one more here is copy 3 and so on and I do it also on uh, on in this direction okay. So uh, I put one more copy here if you want I will call it copy 1 prime and then yet another copy 2 prime and so on. When I do this uh, what I get is really the complex plane. So, you see here is my complex plane uh, see and well uh, how do I go from back from here to here to do that uh, all I have to do is well choose a point here uh, on one of these lines one of these lines that from the edge of this edges of one of the edges of the strip call that as the origin okay and then uh, draw uh, uh, draw the axis there the usual axis like this. So this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis incidentally you should not confuse that z with the z here because this was the z in R3 and you, you should not you should forget this z when I am talking about that okay uh, uh, well um, maybe I will I will put a z like this so that you do not uh, get confused with this z and that z well and then you know uh, I draw this perpendicular I draw this perpendicular and I take this vector so this is a complex number z now okay and you can see that uh, translation by z0 the translation map by z0 which is take any complex number z and translate it by z0 so this is z plus z0 translate it once more I am going to get z plus 2 z0 okay and translate it well uh, in the in the other direction so this is z minus z0 translate it <coughs> once more I will get uh, well z minus 2 z0 and so on. So this is the translation by z0 uh, if I do it so many times uh, then you see that this translation by z0 will map this strip exactly onto this strip translation of uh, uh, translation by 2 z0 will map this strip onto that okay. And translation by z0 uh, uh, by minus z0 will map this strip onto this translation by minus 2 z0 will map this strip onto this. So this translation by multiples integer multiples of z0 is precisely the operation that identifies all these strips together to give you back the strip okay. So uh, that is the whole point of uh, 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 trying to get uh, a complex structure on this. So we will have to now formalize this so what you do we do the following thing uh, we take uh, we take the complex plane we define an equivalence relation we define an equivalence relation um, you what you do is you fix a z0 the complex number z0 and make sure that z0 is not 0 okay. So you think of z0 uh, like this and what you do is for uh, z and z prime complex numbers we define z is equivalent to z prime if and only if equivalent uh, uh, if if and only if uh, z is equal to z prime plus n times z0 where n is an integer 
So, this script z denotes the set of integers. So, you can easily check that this is an equivalence relation okay, and uh, therefore, you can look at the set of equivalence classes. Okay. So, what you do is uh, uh, consider the set of equivalence classes uh, which is which I will write as C mod tilde. So, this is the usual notation. Uh, set modulo an equivalence relation okay and you also get a map uh, c to from the complex plane to c mod tilde and i'll call this map as p by is a natural map which takes any complex number z to its equivalence class this is the equivalence class class of z under this equivalence relation okay. So, if you think about it if I take uh, z naught to be this uh, vector here this complex number here then uh, c mod tilde the set of equivalence classes is precisely my cylinder because you see what is going to happen is that all the all the copies of the strip are going to get identified with one copy. So, I am going to get this but the identification is still not complete because on this there are still given a point here it has to be still identified with, with, the, with the corresponding point here and given a point here it has to still be identified with a point here and that is because uh, they are still translates by z naught okay. So, I still have to do uh, uh, essentially uh, gluing this uh, edge with this edge it is only then that I that I get this this set of equivalence classes okay. So, I therefore get the cylinder okay. So, C mod tilde is just uh, C at least as a set that is because uh, it can also be seen in another way if it makes it makes it more clearer for you take any point in uh, C mod tilde that is an equivalence class okay. Now, what I want you to understand is that if you take a strip like this any point inside okay uh, if you take its equivalence uh, its equivalence classes it will be full of points which are translated uh, translates of this point and if this is a an interior point of the strip you will get exactly one point. So, for all the in interior points of a strip they are the unique representatives for their equivalence classes in that strip okay. So, that is what happens to interior points okay, but if there is a point on the strip which is a boundary point then in one strip you get two representatives namely the point on one edge and the corresponding point on the other edge and so if you want to still get an equivalence if, if you want to go uh, uh, do the equivalence you still have to identify these two and when you do that you get the cylinder. So, you must understand that this cylinder is exactly uh, C mod tilde at least as a set okay and that is the whole point. The point is that uh, you are able to realize a cylinder as a set of equivalence classes for a nice equivalence relation on uh, the set of complex numbers and this is what will help you to give a Riemann surface structure on the cylinder. So, let me um, let me make a couple of remarks the first thing is well um you see notice that number 1 if p is a point of the cylinder okay if p is a point of the cylinder and z is a complex number with uh, pi of uh, is that equal to p so you see i am identifying the set of equivalence classes at least as a set with the cylinder so well if you if you give me a point p on the cylinder okay now that point p is going to correspond to a point on the strip either it can correspond to a point uh, 
the interior in which case you will get only one point or it may correspond to uh, two points if it is a boundary point I will get two points. So I will get P prime and P double prime I will get two points okay and well uh, if I uh, look at this point uh, in these many copies that I have written down then <coughs> saying that uh, uh, the image of Z is P is the same as saying that that is one of those points. So uh, Z is a point which goes to P okay uh, the way I have drawn it this Z has to go to this P because this C this is an interior point of the strip so it has to actually go to this but it could this Z could have well been on one of the edges alright. Uh, that is the situation I am looking at I am I'm, I'm taking a point of uh, the cylinder uh, you think of it as an equivalence class and you take a representative of the equivalence class okay well take this then what is what is uh, pi inverse of p pi inverse of p if you look at it it is going to be just the equivalence class. the the set of points equivalent to z right so because is what is this map it takes every point to its equivalence class and so if you take the inverse image of an equivalence class you will get all the points in the equivalence class that is exactly what you will get right so so pi inverse of p will be the set of all those points that are equivalent to z and you can see that that is nothing but pi inverse of p will be just z plus uh, integer comp integer multiples of the point z now because the, the the set of points equivalent to z is all the translates by integer multiples of z not which is what i've drawn here these are all the these are all the translates okay so the inverse image of a single point will be a set this set of points they, they are all uh, we translates of z okay so that is what you will get and what this notation means is this is a set of all z plus n z naught where n is an integer and you can see that this is bijective to z if you want it is just a copy of z because uh, I will have to just map this uh, z plus n z not to z to n okay. So it is a copy of z you take any point the inverse image is just a copy of z right. Well I can generalize this a little bit more if uh, s is a subset of uh, uh, of the cylinder okay and s prime is a subset of uh, uh, the complex plane such that pi of s prime is equal to s and say uh, pi restricted to s prime is by is is bijective okay so here what i did was I took a point on the cylinder and I took a representative okay here what I am doing is I am taking a subset of points on the cylinder and I am taking a subset of representatives okay and then the same kind of argument will tell you that pi inverse of uh, s will be nothing but s prime plus all the translates of s prime okay so it will be s prime plus again z times z now this is going to be the set of all s prime plus n z not where s prime belongs to capital s prime and uh, n belongs to z this is what i'm going to get okay i'm just trying to uh, make you understand what this map is i'm just trying to make you understand what this map is okay so it's very clear that you know now if I choose uh, on the strip a very small uh, uh, disc if I choose a very small disc here so the radius of the disc is extremely small okay 
uh, then and suppose I call this disc as uh, say D right. Then if I take the image of this D in the cylinder what I am going to get is I am going to get a small disc like neighborhood surrounding the point P okay. So it is going to be just uh, so what I will get what I will get here is so uh, well let me rub, rub the circles off and draw it like this. So here is my D okay. So if I take a disc like this and I take its image I am still going to get a disc here a disc like neighborhood and if I take the inverse image of this okay what I am going to get is I am going to get all possible translates of this disc by uh, uh, multi integer multiples of Z0. So this is what I am going to get okay and since I have chosen the disc sufficiently small the map pi mind you the map pi is this is a map pi this is exactly the map pi what this map pi is going to do is it is going to map all these uh, translates of Z uh, to the point P and all these all these disks to to this disk here okay. So well I can call let me call this as pi D I will call this as pi D and uh, I can use this to now give a coordinate at the point D okay. And why is that? That is because of the fact that well uh, I just now said that this cylinder is just the set of equivalence classes as a set okay uh, it is just a set of uh, equivalence classes as a set but then the cylinder uh, has more structure in fact it is a topological space and uh, it is a nice surface in R3. Uh, uh, and you can do calculus on it if you want uh, there is a notion of differentiable functions and so on and so forth whereas the set C mod tilde does not seem to have anything. So to begin with at least you can put a topology on C mod tilde on the set C mod tilde so that the identification of C mod tilde with this cylinder is a real identification even as topological spaces and the way you do that is a standard technique in, in topology which is called uh, uh, giving the quotient topology. So let me let me uh, let me come to that. Uh, give uh, uh, C mod tilde the set of equivalence classes the quotient topology. What is this quotient topology? The quotient topology is a set here is open if and only if its inverse image under pi, the set given by the inverse image under pi, which is a subset of the complex plane that is open okay. So uh, and a set in the complex plane of course you, you can recall is said to be open if it is a union of uh, disks okay. So yes yes a subset is uh, said to be open if pi inverse of S is open in C. So this is called the quotient topology and this is a technique that can be used uh, whenever you have uh, a surjective map from a topological space to any set okay. If X is whenever you have a topological space and you have surjective map to any set then to this set you can give a topology by namely the quotient topology namely you call uh, a subset of the target open if and only if the inverse image under this map is an open set in your uh, source topological space. So that is what I am doing here. Now the, the advantage of this definition is that it automatically makes pi continuous because well <coughs> this is uh, uh, this is actually begging the question you see if normally if you are given two topological spaces and if I give you a map when do we say that is it, it, it that it is continuous only when the inverse image of an open set is open but now I am demanding the inverse image of an open set to be open. So this automatically makes pi continuous okay. So this automatically 
makes pi continuous this automatically makes pi continuous and in fact what it does is that it actually identifies uh, uh, the set of equivalence classes with the cylinder even topologically. Now the identification is not just as I said but it is an identification also in the topological sense that is because you see if I now take a point z and if I take a disc small disc d surrounding z then its image here will be a small disc uh, disc like neighborhood pi d uh, surrounding the point p and if you now take this set this is open because pi inverse of pi d is d the union of d and it translates okay that is a union of open sets so it is open so that makes pi d open okay. So what you have actually proved is that pi is an open map that is it takes open sets to open sets that is another beautiful property of this map okay. So the moral of the story is that you not only recover the cylinder as the set of equivalence classes you actually recover it as uh, this topological space structure on the set of equivalence classes that makes pi a continuous map by the quotient topology okay. So, so let me write the following down given uh, a small disc d centered at z with pi of z is equal to p on the cylinder okay we see that because pi inverse of pi of d is just d and all of its translates okay this is set of all z plus uh, z prime plus n z naught where z prime is an element of d and n is an integer okay because pi inverse of pi of d is a union is open being a union of open sets okay. So each d plus n z naught is an open set okay it is just a translate of d okay and union of all these d uh, plus n z naughts as n varies is precisely what this set is. So in fact I can write this as d plus z times z naught is equal to union n belonging to z d plus n times z naught and each d plus n times z naught is homeomorphic to d uh, or even holomorphic. even holomorphically isomorphic to d because translation is of course a holomorphic isomorphism okay translation is a holomorphic map and it is injective and the uh, and there is an inverse map for translation okay. So well so each of these sets is like d and this is a union of these open sets so it is open okay. So <coughs> if you start with a small disc d here I am going to get it get its image here as an open set okay and this is what is going to help me to give a chart at the point p namely what I do is the following what is it that I want I want an open set surrounding the point p and I want a homeomorphism of that open set with an open set open subset of the complex plane. So what will I do I will take this open set pi of d and the map I will take is pi inverse and that pi inverse will be not just any pi inverse I will just take this d itself I will rest if I restrict pi to this d mind you it is bijective that is because you see I have made this disk very small okay. So 
two points in two different points in this disc cannot go to I mean they, they cannot go to the same point here. If this disc <coughs> were, were made large enough so that it, it extended beyond the boundaries. So for example instead of this disc suppose I took a huge disc <coughs> then I will get several points which will go to the same point there the map will fail to be injective okay. So that is the reason to choose the disc to be small enough okay. So that that is what is going to help me to give uh, uh, a complex coordinate at this point. So let me do this uh, we take uh, the pair pi of d comma pi restricted to d inverse as a chart containing p okay. So what I have uh, finally been able to do is for every point here I have been able to give you a chart okay and I can do this for every point because my point was arbitrary. Um, the only thing that remains to say that this is a Riemann surface is to say that all these charts are compatible that is the only condition we will have to check and once we check that then this collection of charts is going to give you a Riemann surface structure and of course when we talk about that Riemann surface structure we of course think of the uh, we also keep in mind the max the maximal chart which contains this chart okay. So let me write that down so we get a collection of charts as above as p varies that cover that covers uh, uh, your cylinder okay. Now to say that this collection of charts is an atlas I will have to just verify the uh, compatibility condition the uh, so let me do that that is also pretty easy we can even do it diagrammatically of course all these things can be written down a little bit more formally but uh, nevertheless it is this uh, uh, this is it is not very difficult to write things down more formally okay. In whatever way I cut the cylinder there will be some boundary points for that boundary points how do you give this correspondence? Uh, you mean a neighbourhood? No, there is no problem. If if your if the point you select was a point on the dotted line, okay, then uh, you are going to get two representatives for that point, okay. And so here, uh, well, the 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 point is you you are going to get a point. Uh, an inverse image will look like z prime, if you want to call it. And you know uh, what you will get is all of its translates. You will get all these points. And if you take a disc-like neighborhood, small enough disc-like neighborhood surrounding this then again the image of that small enough disc like neighbourhood in, in for example on this strip you will get uh, so let me rub this off and just put a very small cross here let me rub this off. So the inverse image of that neighbourhood uh, I mean the uh, under this map is going to be well you are going to find a piece here so let me call this as p prime here so I am going to get a piece here and I am going to get another piece here but then when you glue it you are going to get if my point is p prime I am still going these two things are going to glue I am going to still get a nice disc okay. So in this way you are actually covering every point even the boundary points okay. So it will work even if you had chosen the up a point on the dotted line where you have cut it okay <coughs> and of course here I have put in some arbitrariness because you know uh, the way I pasted this uh, disc on the complex plane well I could have even kept it vertical or I could have kept it horizontal but just to give a general case I have put it at an angle and I have drawn the axis arbitrarily so that I get a vector the, the, the only restriction the way I have done it is that this vector has to have length equal to the uh, length of the unit circle nothing more okay and even that restriction you can remove okay. If you remove that restriction and you take any z naught which is non-zero you are going to get a cylinder anyway 
the only thing is that it is not going to be uh, uh, the, the circle the, the, the perpendicular section of the cylinder is going to be a circle it is radius is not going to be 1 it is going to be something else but nevertheless it is the same as a cylinder up to a scaling okay so it is the same surface. So on that also you will still get a Riemann surface structure okay so uh, it is easy easy to verify that uh, the charts are compatible so that we do get a Riemann surface we do get an atlas and a Riemann surface structure on the cylinder okay. So uh, let me do that a little bit uh, uh, in a diagrammatic way so you see so here is my situation so here is my cylinder so here is my cylinder and well I have uh, I have a point uh, let me call this as uh, P1 and it is surrounded by a small disc like neighbourhood T1 um, <coughs> let me draw it a little bigger so that it is easier to label these things. So here is my point P1 and uh, it is surrounded by uh, disc like neighbourhood pi of D1 okay the way I have done it. So it means that what I have uh, what I have done is well here is my complex plane okay I have chosen a point um, uh, I have chosen a point Z1 okay which uh, is being mapped by this is this map is just the map pi and this is this is a cylinder which is identified with uh, the set of equivalence classes okay this Z1 is going to go to uh, P1 so P1 is uh, P1 is uh, pi of Z1 okay and of course this pi of d1 is uh, just the image of a disc d1 small enough disc d1 which is surrounding z1 okay and then uh, what is this compatibility I will have to say that whenever two charts intersect then I will have to say that the transition function is holomorphic okay. So take another uh, take another such chart so that is going to be centered at some other point p2 and uh, I am uh, th this is going to be just pi of d2 where well p2 uh, is going to be the image of a point z2 here okay so p2 will pi pi of z2 and d2 is going to be uh, again a small enough disc centered at uh, z2 right and what I'll have to say is that uh, uh, I'll have to say that the transition functions are holomorphic so what is it that I do well let us let me write down the transition function so I have so the transition function from here to here is what is this function this is well uh, if you want let me call it as phi 1 phi 1 is just pi restricted to d1 and inverse that is a transition function right because that is the way we have defined always a chart consists of a pair u comma phi where u is an open set and phi from u to an open subset of the complex plane is a homeomorphism so my open set is phi d it is open because I have already proved why it is open because of the quotient topology and pi restricted to d is a is a homeomorphism okay so pi d inverse is also a homeomorphism so it is a pi d pi restricted to d inverse is a homeomorphism from pi d to d <coughs> so pi restricted to d1 inverse is I call it if I call it as P1 it is a homeomorphism from D1 pi D1 to D1 similarly I will get another homeomorphism like this this homeomorphism is going to be just uh, phi 2 if I want to call it as phi 2 it is pi restricted to D2 inverse right and uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, condition that I will have to verify take this intersection which is pi D1 intersection pi D2 and this will correspond to well uh, a piece of the disc here okay and uh, it will also correspond to a piece of the disc here okay and I will have to say 
that the transition function which is uh, the transition function is now going to go from here to here which is go by phi 2 inverse and then follow it up by phi 1 this is my so called g 1 2 my transition function and I will have to say that this is uh, I will have to say that this is just a holomorphic map. Well if you complete the picture properly you can see that uh, if I take all the translates of d 1 which will be the inverse image of pi d 1 under pi and if I look at all the translates of d 2 in fact what will happen is that I will get there will be a translate of this d 2 which will look which will which will essentially be like this okay and then this d 2 this intersection comes from a translate of d 1 which will look like this okay and these two will be translates of each other and this translation will be translation by the vector uh, this will be the vector z0 okay. So what you will get here will be some d2 plus some m times uh, z0 that is what this disk will be and what you will get so, so, so this is my d1 and let me let me write it properly and this is my t2 okay and this disk will be d1 plus uh, uh, some m prime z0 okay because you see if you think about it these two disks you go back to this picture these two disks side by side are going to give you two disks here and then when I take the uh, inverse image I am going to get a pair of disks along with their intersections and they are all translates okay so it is actually going to look like this only the only thing is that you see I have to translate this to this to get this image and therefore literally my z0 should be in this direction if this image is correct okay. So the moral of the story is that this g12 is nothing but translation by you can write that down what will happen is that you see this disk this d1 plus m prime z0 uh, if I translate it by minus m prime z0 I should get d1 okay and this disk if I translate it by m z0 I should get this d2 plus m z0 so what it will tell you is that this m is equal to minus m prime okay you will get you will get m equal to minus of m prime and and g12 to be the map that sends omega to uh, omega if you want plus uh, mz this g12 will just be a translation by an integer multiple of z0 you, you will see that d2 will go to d2 plus mz0 okay and d1 will go to d1 plus mz0 but m is minus m prime so it will go d1 will go to d1 plus m uh, d1 plus m prime z0 will go to d1 plus m prime z0 minus m prime z0 so I will get back d1 okay. So you will see that uh, g12 is just translation by a suitable uh, integer multiple of uh, uh, z0 and this is certainly a holomorphic map it is just a translation okay. So the, the moral of the story is if you if you write it down you will see that this is just the, the transition function is just translation by a multiple of integer multiple of z0 okay and that is holomorphic so that gives you the compatibility condition between any two charts okay you will have to of course I am assuming that these disks are very small okay and uh, then this is true okay you can convince yourself you can write it down. So uh, having done this we have, we have been able to give a Riemann surface structure on the cylinder right now there is there is one more aspect of uh, this that uh, uh, one can look at and that is the so called uh, group theoretic interpretation of this uh, which I will try to now explain okay. So let me give you also a group theoretic uh, interpretation. And this interpretation is important because uh, what is going to happen in uh, is that uh, 
the whole idea is that uh, as we will see that may we will prove that all Riemann surfaces can be gotten from well known Riemann surfaces like the plane or the Riemann sphere or uh, the uh, unit disc by going modulo a group of automorphisms ok. So, uh, the idea is you can get every Riemann surface uh, as a quotient by a group of automorphisms and this philosophy in general is called the uniformization theorem okay, the general uniformization theorem and this is the technique <coughs> which allows you to translate questions on Riemann surface to questions on the complex plane or uh, something as simple as the unit disc or this Riemann sphere ok. So, let me give you this group theoretic interpretation. So, what you what we do is that we first recall uh, that the the automorphisms of the complex plane set of holomorphic automorphisms of the complex plane uh, that is given by the set of maps of the form z going to a z plus b where a is not 0 and of course, a and b are complex numbers ok. So, these are all these are all the possible uh, holomorphic automorphisms of the complex plane ok. Uh, I think you would have proved this in a first course in complex analysis, but if you have not you can still do it uh, and uh, well uh, these are in, in particular they are Mobius transformations ok. Now, uh, what I am going to do is that uh, I fix this vector z0 and I was looking at translations by z0 or rather translations by integer multiples of z0. So, what I am going to do is uh, instead of looking at z0 I look at the translation by z0 ok and mind your translation by z0 is also an element here a translation is an element here namely I, I take a equal to 1 then it becomes translation by b ok. So, what I do is that I define uh, I define this group uh, uh, z times z naught ok uh, if, if if I want rather let me put t z naught ok which is what this is set of all maps e z going to e z plus n z naught where n is an integer ok. Of course, mind you again z naught is not 0 and T z naught is this map and 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 well this map will then be n times T z naught and you you can check that this is also equal to translation by of course, it is equal to translation of n times z translation by n times z naught ok. If T sub lambda denotes translation by lambda ok. So, here is my group and you can see that uh, this is isomorphic to the group of integers and radition after all uh, two translations when you uh, so here uh, you see this is a group under composition ok. In fact all these uh, holomorphic automorphisms that itself is a group and the, the operation is composition <coughs> take any two holomorphic automorphisms compose them you get another holomorphic automorphisms uh, another holomorphic automorphism. And in, but the only problem is that uh, that is a and of course, any element here a holomorphic automorphism here has an inverse the inverse of a holomorphic automorphism is also a holomorphic automorphism and uh, you can also write that inverse down explicitly using this formula ok and you will see that the inverse is again a map of this type ok. So, it is actually a group under composition of mappings and uh, here how do uh, two elements uh, combine they combine by composition. So, in particular if I take two translations they 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 combine by composition ok uh, and that corresponds to adding integers you see that is because you see if I take uh, uh, if I take an, a complex number z and first apply t by uh, t z naught ok or let let us forget z naught let me put z 1 ok then all I will get is I will get z plus z 1 then if I apply T z 2 I am going to get uh, e z plus z 1 plus z 2 and you can see that this composition is just T e z 1 plus z 2 it is T z 1 z 2 composition T z 1 first apply T z 1 then apply T z 2 
you get this and you can see that uh, uh, since I am getting z1 plus z2 it is a commutative group okay. So these uh, these uh, whether I apply first tz1 and then tz2 or whether I first apply tz2 and then tz1 it is going to give me a commutative group and in fact uh, you can get this isomorphism by sending the tn z0 to n okay. So this tn z0 going to n it will be an isomorphism of groups namely uh, it will preserve the addition here and uh, the addition here will correspond to addi addition of integers. So the moral of the story is I am looking at uh, uh, the translations as a group a subgroup of automorphisms of the complex plane okay and you know whenever a group acts on a set we can talk about the orbits of the group okay the orbits of the group are just given any point of the set you look at all those points that you get by applying elements of the group but that in this case just translates to the following it is you take any point and you just take translates of the point by uh, integer multiples of z0 okay and therefore uh, the orbit of a point z is just going to be just the uh, equivalence class of the point z. So this tells you that you can think of uh, the quotient uh, the set of equivalence classes that is C mod tilde as uh, the complex plane model of this group okay. So you see the cylinder which has been identified with the set of equivalence classes is also just the complex plane model of this group <coughs> z t z okay it is it is it is quotient by a group okay and well uh, if you take this point of view then it explains that uh, this is also uh, you know isomorphic to c mod z if you want because after all z times t z0 can be identified with z by this map okay and so what it tells you is that your, your cylinder is c mod z basically it is c mod z complex numbers mod z okay and uh, you if you really look at it in a very uh, natural way the this this should have a group structure after all it is a group uh, by a subgroup right if you think of z as sitting inside c as a subgroup then this is a, this is a group okay and uh, that should uh, make you expect that uh, there is going to be some group structure on this <coughs> on the on the cylinder and there is because after all it is s1 cross r okay you take an element of s1 uh, both of them are groups r is group r is a group under addition s1 is a group under multiplication and this is just a product group and therefore this group structure actually uh, is natural to expect. So all I am trying to tell you is that your group structure also comes uh, into the picture if you think of it as a quotient of c by a group of automorphisms okay and this viewpoint is uh, going to be extremely important. In, in the lectures that follow okay so i'll stop here Thank you.